Please remember that the complete information for the class that you are about to view is at elithecomputerguy.com. Not only do we have our videos there, but we have part lists, diagrams, pictures, and even complete code examples. So if you are watching this video and you want more information, please go to elithecomputerguy.com. Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and in today's class, we're going to be talking about how to get the average of values in a column of a table in a MySQL database server. So let's say you've created an application, and that application is going to be collecting values of some sort. So I've been in the real world, I've been creating a little infrastructure project using Arduinos in order to send temperature data to a MySQL database server. And so I have literally hundreds of thousands of records now now that say what the temperature value is for a number of different Arduino devices. So let's imagine you have Arduino devices that are sending su such as temperature data to your MySQL database server, or possibly you have some type of invoicing system and that invoicing system has totals. Basically imagine you are cre you've created a table and one of the columns in that table collects numeric values for some reason. And then let's say you want to find out what the average of those values are. So let's say uh, if you have an invoice system you want to know what the average value of an invoice is so some invoices are ten dollars and some invoices are a thousand dollars what is the average value of an invoice well using some back-end code with PHP or Ruby on Rails or Python or something like that you could go and you could query uh, the, the database server you could query the table you could pull out all of the, the records the values from the records <coughs> And then using PHP or Ruby or Python, you could do, then do the math on that and figure out what the average is. But an important thing to remember whenever you, you're using a MySQL database server is there's actually a lot of functionality built into MySQL. And if you use the built-in functionality in MySQL, it may make your application perform a lot better. And so one of the cool things that's built into your MySQL database server is the ability to average the values in a particular column in a table table and then be able uh, to do like where uh, basically add on additional options to really be able to narrow down what it is that you're looking for. So in today's class, I'm simply going to be showing you how to be able to get the average of the values in a particular column. And I'm going to give you some examples of how you can do this. So the only warning warning for today, boys and girls is remember garbage in means garbage out. Garbage in means garbage out. This is very important when you're dealing with any kind of like database type application when you're, where you're going to be taking in numeric values and then you're going to be doing calculations based off of those values. Uh, so in the example that I'm going to be showing you today, again, I have this little Arduino project. I have numerous Arduinos all communicating back to the database server. Uh, and basically every three seconds, all of those Arduinos are sending their values to the database server. What that means is that there are hundreds and hundreds hundreds of thousands of records already sitting in my database server. One of the problems that you can run into, especially when you start doing calculations such as averaging, is what happens if some of the numbers are just way out of whack? right so uh, so since this is a temperature you know temperature readings the temperature readings should be somewhere between let's say 60 to 100 degrees um, well one of the problems you might run into is what if you have values that are in the thousands right the max is supposed to be a hundred but your values are up in the thousands for whatever reason so one of the things that you do have to remember before you're going to start doing calculations especially off of numeric values in your table is to go through and clean out the values in the table and verify uh, that they look how they're supposed to look so you may want to go through and do select statements basically say select where temperature is greater than a hundred uh, pull up those records see what's going on there and most likely delete those records so one of the things that you do have to be thinking about is if you're going to be doing calculations based off of the values in your uh, your table that you make sure that those values are clean uh, that they're good because one of the big issues that you can run into is again you may have a hundred thousand um, records again temperature records and they all may be between 60 to 90 degrees like they're supposed to be but again if you have a couple million you know records that basically say the temperature is a million or two million that's going to screw up all of the the, what the the in the output average is so do be careful about that so with that when you have that in mind uh, let's go over and take a look at the server and take a look at these basic commands
So here we are at my database server. Again, I'm running Ubuntu 18.04 LTS and I'm running the desktop version just to give you some, some visualization here. Uh, but what I'm showing you today should basically work on any version of MySQL uh, that you're dealing with and it should run on basically any distribution of Linux. So just to give you an idea of what my, my table currently looks like, uh, let's just simply do a describe of temp. So I have a, a table called temp and we're going to take a look and here we can see these are the different values that we have. So we have the record ID, uh, we have the temp that we're interested in, we have a timestamp value, and then we have a MAC address here. So basically, again, uh, for my particular project, I have, I think I have five, I have five Arduino uh, Uno Wi-Fi's that are all communicating with this database server and inputting data into it. Uh, because of that, and again, they're inputting data literally every three seconds, uh, if we do a select uh, all from... Uh, from temp, what we're gonna see is I have a metric crap ton of records here. Uh, so when I do this, again, just simply to print out the results is it takes that long. So I have 369,193 records. Uh, so with that many records, again, um, trying to do math based off of this or try to figure out things like average temperatures might be a little bit difficult if I'm trying to get that using an external program. Again, like think about if I'm using a, um, a back-end scripting language, that scripting language would have to query uh, the database for all of the records pull all the values of those records out, then be able to parse, be able to process all of those records uh, to give you the, the output, what the final result is. So something that can be a lot better is simply having MySQL do it itself. So for the, the first thing that I wanna show you is we can just simply do select, and then we use AVG and then parentheses temp. So what this is gonna say here is select, and then give me the average of the temp the, the values in the temp column. So 369,000 records. I want the average of those 369,000 records and then simply from the table temp, right? And so when I do this, what we're gonna see is relatively quickly, uh, this is just simply outputting the results for me. So the average temp out of all about 369, 193 records is 72.0041. So that's a very uh, quick way to be able to get the average. Uh, there are some other uh, commands that you can uh, do here too. Again, you can use uh, where commands, you can do multiple where, you know, where something and something, and you can also do a group by. Uh, so I'm just gonna scroll up so I don't fat finger this. Uh, but let's say, again, I have numerous different MAC addresses here, so we have uh, uh, these different MAC addresses. So one of the things I'm gonna say is I want the average for one particular MAC address. So again, all my Arduino Unos with Wi-Fi's, they have individual MAC addresses, that, that's their unique identifier. So I just wanna be able to pull up the average for one of those um, particular um, uh, uh, MAC addresses. So that's where I can do the select average temp from the temp da uh, database, or the temp table, I'm sorry, where the MAC address equals this particular MAC address. So he up here, when I'm looking at this average, this is the average for all MAC addresses. This is the average for all records within the table. What if I simply want the value, the, the average for one particular MAC address? So I can just simply plug this in here. Again, we do the same average, ABG temp from temp. The only difference here, here is we say where MAC address equals. And then we hit enter and we can see it takes 0.29 seconds. And then we can see for that particular MAC address, the average is 69.71. So we can see that the average for all the Arduinos is higher than the average for what that one particular Arduino. Then one of the things you can do too, is you can do multiple where's. So you can say uh, where MAC address is something and something like the timestamp, right? So if I, uh, let me just scroll up through my commands, and that's what we have here. So basically, what we're doing here is we have the same command all the way up to the MAC address, but then we're saying, and timestamp is greater than this particular timestamp. So when I showed you, when I should, well, when I showed you the, uh, the, the, this table, when I described this table to you, one of the things in the table is a timestamp. And so one of the things I can do here then is I can say, I want the average for this particular uh, MAC address since this particular timestamp. So you could do an average, you know, within the past two hours or within the past day or within the past week, something like that. Uh, if we hit enter here, 
we can see that it basically comes out to the same. So since that particular uh, timestamp there, we get the 69.7109. Uh, uh, so again, that just is a different way we can try to focus in and figure out what the average for this particular uh, column is. Then beyond that, one of the cool things we can do is also by group by. So again, we have multiple different MAC addresses. So what if we want the average, the averages per MAC address? So one of the things you can do there is you can actually do the group by. Uh, so where is it? There we go. So basically what we're going to say here is we're going to say select and this time we're going to say MAC address. So MAC address comma and then AVG temp. So we want the MAC address. We want to be able to pull the MAC address out of the table and we want to pull the average for the temp uh, from the temp table. But then we're going to say group by MAC address. And so what this is going to do then is it's going to show us the averages per MAC address, so basically per identifier that we give it. So we hit enter here. This will take an extra second or so. So it takes about two seconds, but then this shows us. So here are our different MAC addresses. So these are the five different Arduino devices I have communicating back with this database server. And then we can see for this particular MAC address, the average temperature is 88 degrees. For this particular MAC address, the average temperature is 71. For this one, 79. For this one, 69. And for this one, it is 67. So those are some different ways you can use uh, the average, the AVG, uh, the ability within your MySQL database server to get the, the average values out of the column in a table and be able to refine down uh, to try to get the specific information that you're looking for. So there you go. Now you know how to get the average of the values in a column in a MySQL database table. And beyond that, more importantly, you can refine uh, the values that you're getting back uh, to be more specific. Again, in the particular example that I showed you, I have these little Arduino devices. They're communicating with the, the MySQL database server. And so I am interested in the values of the specific devices. Uh, where this may come uh, into, into your life is it might be something like if you create an invoicing system and then you want to see the averages per customer right so if every customer in your system has a unique customer ID instead of just seeing what the average uh, invoice value is you can see what the average invoice value is per customer this could be very valuable for your boss or for you because you could find out what customers are actually valuable and what customers eh, not so much right you know again one of the important things to, to think about with numbers is what you're looking for when when you get a number or you're giving a number to somebody else is is you're looking for a number that's actually actionable right the more useful the number is obviously the more valuable it is so simply uh, giving your boss or even giving yourself what the average value of all of your invoices is right that's that that has a use so you may know okay the average value for all of my invoices uh, is a hundred dollars so uh, some of the invoices are three thousand dollars and some of the invoices are ten dollars but when you average it out the average value of an invoice is a hundred dollars right that may have some use for you but something that might be even more valuable is actually to be able to drill down that's what they talk about drill down into the data and see which of your customers or are more or less valuable so instead of simply seeing what the average uh, value of an invoice is, what are the average values of an invoice per customer? And so you might find some of your customers, their average invoices are $1,500, and some of your, their, your customers, the average invoices are $10. Again, from a business standpoint, when you're looking at resources, basically resources that the business has to spend in order to support your customers and clients, you may look at that and go, well, okay, maybe we need to put a couple of more resources on these $1,500 hundred dollar invoice people and frankly maybe we need to fire these ten dollar invoice people right and that's an important thing for your your owner your C at C level executive or yourself to understand is basically understand who is valuable to your company and who is not valuable to your company um, and then be able to go from there so being able to drill down into the numbers like this uh, can be a very useful thing and one of the things that you should be thinking about again whether you're using MySQL or whether you're using some kind of NoSQL database engine or something like that 
is a lot of times when people learn programming languages such as Python or PHP or Ruby, so many times they try to do everything within that particular language, right? So I am going to create an average of the values in PHP or in Python. So that language is going to communicate with your with your MySQL database server. The MySQL database server is going to have to send all the values uh, to your scripting language. Your scripting language is then going to have to parse and actually add it, add and subtract and do all the math. And then you're going to get the result. One of the things that you may find is built within the database software itself, there's a lot of this very basic functionality uh, where you may be able to just be able to pull those results. Uh, it'll be a lot faster, it'll have a lot less resource consumption, um, and so most likely it will be better for your system. So this is an important thing to be thinking about. Again, once you start dealing with things like math uh, with your, your database server, is think about where where tasks should be should should be performed should those tasks be performed by that backend language python php ruby or is it better if that task is performed by the database server itself and usually again depending on uh, depending on a whole bunch of things but usually having it actually being performed by the uh the database server uh, will be a better way to go so one of those things uh to be thinking about so as always i enjoy doing this class and look forward to seeing you at the next one if you like the content that I create, please think about going to elinethecomputerguy.com and becoming a member or donating. Please understand that all the educational videos are in front of the paywall. That includes the videos, that includes the notes, the diagrams, and the code example. All of that is freely available and in front of the paywall. But if you want to watch opinion videos or if you want to be able to comment, you do need to become a member. Membership is $5 a month or $60 a year and gives you access to those opinion videos and the ability uh, to comment. If you don't want to become a member, you just want to give a one-time uh, donation, there is also a donate button where you can do that. Please understand, in order to provide the education that I am, it does cost money. The servers cost money, equipment costs money, travel costs money. All of these things cost a reasonable amount of money. And the fact of the matter is, is YouTube's advertising program no longer supports creators the way that it used to. So if you want to these classes to continue to stick around and you find them to be valuable, please think about either becoming a monthly member or donating a few dollars for this project.